Today I'm going to talk about how to handle dynamics in a peer-to-peer -peer over a network and more specifically in a DHT. So all along I'm going to take the example of the peer-to-peer -peer overlay network called Paystream. Dynamic in a peer-to-peer -peer overlay can come from different things. So first of all it can come from either failures of machines or also what we call churn which is basically nodes coming and going in the network. In a peer-to-peer -peer system, because there is no central server, the challenge is actually to reconfigure the overlay network automatically and in a fully decentralized way. Let's start by a reminder of the data structure that you need to achieve routing in a peer-to-peer -peer DHT. If you remember, in page 3, nodes are assigned unique ID that place them in a logical ring. Node ID are 128 bits long and key IDs are 100, usually 164 bit long. Actually, that's the case in page 3. In order to route from a given source, say for example 65A1FC, to a given destination, say for example that key here, what page 3 does is that at each routing hop, it's going to fix one digit at a time. So the first the message is going to be sent, so for example, to that node here, fixing the first digit, and then to another node fixing the second digit, and so on and so forth, until it reaches the destination. So basically, at each step of the routing, we basically divide the naming space by 2 to the B. In order to achieve routing, we need a routing table, which is built as following. So say this is the example of node 65A1FC. First cell is going to contain a node starting with a ID starting with a zero, second here starting with a one, and so on and so forth. The second row of the routing table is going to have one digit in common with the node itself. So say six zero x x x something, six one something, etc. And so on and so forth. Now the question in when there is some dynamics is what happened first of all if you know one of the nodes which is for example in the routing table fails. The other question that we can ask is what happened if there are some empty cell in the routing table. What if a cell of the routing table is empty? When a cell is empty, the routing should progress in a greedy manner in the namespace. What this means is that the next closest node to the destination, to the key, is going to be used. The message is going to be routed to that specific node. And the result is that that will slightly increase the length of the route, which when it's ideal is in the order of log n. And that can actually add a constant to this. In order to maintain failure resilience in base tree, there is an additional data structure which is called the leaf set. And the leaf set in base tree is actually composed for each node of the B nodes, B is a parameter of the system, on each side of the namespace. More precisely, what it means is that for a given node here, if B is 4, which is a typical value in base tree, the leaf set is going to be composed of the four nodes. The node is going to maintain a point pointer to its four neighbors on each side. The leaf set is used for the last hop of a routing. If the key is somewhere in the leaf set, then the last hop is achieved directly by using the leaf set. And also this ensures that there is no partition in the network because there is an aggressive maintenance of this leaf set. So periodically, each node will monitor if the nodes in its leaf set are still alive. If not, it's going to fix the leaf set. Fixing the leaf set is actually quite easy because then you contact a neighbor and take one of its nodes on this leaf set on the side that is needed. Now the question is how to maintain the routing table in the presence of dynamics. So the first tool that exists in pastry is that periodically each node will use a gossip based protocol to exchange some nodes. To do this periodically each node will pick at random a line in its routing table then a node in that line and those two nodes will exchange their entire line of the routing table. So if one of the nodes had an empty cell in its routing table it can then take the equivalent node on the other node after the exchange. Dynamics in such a network can involve two operations. One is the node removal and the other one is the node insertion. So let's talk first about the node removal. So a node removal can be a failure or can also be a voluntary departure. In the case of a voluntary departure, when the node leaves, it's going to inform the leaf set, so the member of its leaf set. 
so that the leaf set can be fixed automatically. The routing table are going to be fixed lazily. The fact that the routing table is fixed in a lazy manner means that whenever a node that has left the system is encountered during a routing operation, it's going to be fixed at that moment. So say that this node RLD is the entry of the routing table of a node A to repair. A will contact another entry at random from the same line L so that I is actually different from D. So the node is going to be RLI. So now A is going to ask B to provide it with the node that is present in its corresponding entry and then it's going to fix that entry with exactly the same node X. Note that if that, note that, if that cell is also empty, then A will contact another entry in the same line or otherwise it will contact another entry for a different line until it finds a node. So in case of failure, this actually happened exactly the same way. So when a, when a node disappears, then the neighbor are going to notice this and then are going to fix the leaf set. Fixing the leaf set is easy because they can use the leaf set of their member of their own leaf set to fix the hole. Similarly, when there is a failure, the maintenance of the routing table are going to be fixed lazily exactly the same way as it was done with a voluntary departure. So the second operation that can happen when there is dynamic is when a node is inserted in the network. So when a node wants to join a pastry network, the first thing that it has to do is that it has to contact a bootstrap node. We assume that this is provided by the system itself. The second thing is that a node will get assigned a node ID by picking randomly a node ID in the namespace. And in order to do this, it's going to use a hash function that avoids collision as much as possible, such as SHA-1, for instance. The third thing is that the node has to fill its data structure, and these data structures are the routing table and the leaf set. In order to do this, the node is simply going to route to itself from the bootstrap node. So say that the bootstrap node is that node here, 651A1FC, and that the node got as a node ID the node D46A1C. So contacting that node starting, it's going to route a message to that destination. So when it contacts this contact node, this is going to be the occasion for the node D. 46A1C. So remember that the goal is to fill the routing table of that node D46A1C. When this node contacts the bootstrap node, the first thing that it's going to do is that it will take here exactly the same entry as the row 0 of the node 65A1FC. Because all the representatives starting from a 0, from a 1, etc. can actually be used as well for that node. In addition, in the specific cell that was empty in the node 65A1FC, this joining node is going to put exactly that node. The first hop is going to end on a given node, fixing the first digit, say D13DA3. Similarly, the second row of the new joining node can be filled with the second row of this node here. And this is exactly what's going to happen. D0 something, D1 something. D0 is going to come from the row number one of the routing table of that given node. The second node here is empty on that node, but then this specific node is going to be used instead, and so on and so forth. Now the second hop towards the destination is going to reach the node D4213F, and yet again, the second hop is going to be forwarded to the node D4213F, fixing the two first digit, and then the third row of the routing table of that node here is going to be used to fill the third row of the joining node. Exactly the same way, D40 something is going to come from the node D4213F, D41, etc. And then instead of the empty cell, we will put this exact node here as a representative for the D42 something, and so on and so forth. When the node has reached its destination, it will insert itself in the peer-to-peer -peer overlay network. Now the routing table is filled as much as possible. The rest of the routing table would be fixed by the gossip-based algorithms where node exchange periodically some random lines of their routing tables. The other thing that the node has to do is that it has to fix a leaf set. Where that's very easy because when you reach its destination, basically the last hop of the routing table had already its own leaf set and this can be used to fix a leaf set of that node and the same thing on the other side. Obviously the leaf set of the neighboring nodes need also to be updated.